recording. Okay, so we left off. What's the probability we find at least one speckled one in a handful of candies? And this was the same as what we did in chapter 14. The probability of at least one is one minus the probability of none. And the probability of none is 0.7, the probability of not being speckled. And all five of them are not, so 1 minus 0.7 to the fifth. Which is 0.832. But then we get into new territory. What if it asks us at least two? Now I can't just subtract off none, right? At least two means two or three or four or five out of five. So it looks like I probably am going to end up adding those all up. All the possibilities is I get zero speckled, right? Plus one speckled, plus two speckled, or three, or four, or five. Out of a handful of five candies, those are all the possibilities for the number of speckled candies I can have, right? Zero through five. All the possibilities must add up to one. Okay. So at least is greater than or equal to two. Okay. At least is always greater than or equal to. That means I want the probability of 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. And so what does that look like if I do this the long way? And remember, we have to not just know the computer commands. We have to know what the equations are and what they look like when everything's plugged in because the multiple choice questions are going to be like that. It's not going to ask you for a percentage that it knows you can just plug it into the calculator. It's going to ask you which is the proper formula with all the numbers plugged in correctly to find the answer. So when I do the probability of at least two, that's going to be five total, choose two. Probability of success is 0.3, two successes, probability of failure, three failures. That's the probability of two, right? Plus the probability of three. Five choose three. Point three cubed, point seven squared. Or it could be four. Five choose four. Point three to the fourth, point seven to the one. Or it could be five. Five choose five. 0.3 to the fifth, 0.7 to the zero. And we would plug that all into our calculator. No, you don't need to put 0.7 to the zero because that's just one. Okay, And you don't even need to do the five choose five because that's one as well. There's only one way to get all five out of all five. So that's also one. So again, it's important we see this because a multiple choice question is going to show that, which is the proper way to find this probability, right? Or it's just going to say, what's, what's the probability? And you select the right answer choices, right? Now I'm going to assign next week the progress checks, and you'll get to experience kind of what those questions look like from the AP website, OK? Now, is there an easier way? Come back here. The complement of at least two would be what? These two things, right? If I'm interested in adding up all of this, then the complement is what I'm not interested in, right? Two calculations instead of four, right? So, yeah, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2 could be solved by doing 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. 
right? This is less than or equal to 1. This is greater than or equal to 2. They're going to add to 1. If I want what's in red, I can subtract from 1 what's in blue, right? Subtract it to the other side of the equation here, which would be the probability of 0 and 1, right? So 1 minus 5 choose 0, 0.3 to the 0, 0.7 to the 5th. Now again, and when you do that in your calculator, you only need to do 0.7 to the 5th, but should we see it all plugged into the formula correctly? Absolutely. Because this question might say, which is the correct way to use the complement rule to find at least 2? Now the answer is the 1 minus part. Plus 5 choose 1, 0.3 to the 1, 0.7 to the 4. Now let's figure out what that is in our calculator. Um, I'm going to video this for again. Not picture. That way we have it in the video. So it's math over to probability, down to NCR. Now again, I said you don't need to do the 5C0. There's only one way to get 0 out of 5, right? So I'm just going to do 5C1 times 0.3 to the 1, which also is unnecessary, times 0.7 to the 4. And then I'm going to add 0.7 to the 5th. Right, that's the 0.7 to the fifth is the no speckled candies, right? 5C0 is 1. 0.3 to the 0 is 1. So all I really need is the 0.75 in that calculation. And so I get 0.52822. Well, that's cool. a lovely... And 1 minus that is 0.472. So there's a 0.472 chance of getting at least 2. So I kind of want to go through all the possibilities when we're talking about, say, out of 5, right? So n is 5. The probability of at least at least 1, that's greater than or equal to 1, is 1 minus the probability of none. The probability of at least 2 is 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to what? Two. 1, right? Because I wanted to subtract off 0 and 1. And the pattern continues. If I want at least 3, that's 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to what? 2. If I want at least 4, that's going to be 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 3, and so on. I could go infinitely here, but what we need to see is that when I'm going to use the complement rule, the number I'm interested in at least, I have to decrease that by 1, to use the complement, because I don't want to include the 4. If I include the 4, I subtract it off part of what I'm interested in finding. The reason this is so important is because the calculator command only does from the number you, from 0 to the number you give it. So it will only do less than or equal to your number. You cannot plug it into the calculator and ask for greater than something. So if you're asked for at least 3, and you want to use the calculator command, you have to do 1 minus the probability that it's less than or equal to 2 in your calculator command. Right? So we have to understand this dynamic of if I want greater than or equal to 3, I'm going to do 1 minus less than or equal to 2. Okay? It's not continuous. Right? They're discrete. 
You can have one M&M or two M&Ms or three M&Ms. You can't have three and a half. Okay, you can't have 3.99. So it's an, um, that's why I have to change it. I can't just say less than or equal to or just less than. I want to change that number. So then the last question on this slide says, how many do we expect on average to find in a handful of 10? How many speckled M&Ms, if there's a 30% chance, do you expect in a handful of 10? Three, right? 30% of 10, mean is N times P. You expect 30% of 10, which is three. Okay. 